G'day, Steve from OffTheGridNoise.com, Stephen Kerry that is. Yes, and there's no music playing in the background, because this is, well, they're all serious, but this one's a bit complicated. I saw a post just a little while ago about geothermal um, systems. Yeah, I've actually got the camera focused on my YouTube channel, uh, it's called Jake's, what's it called? Jake vs. Earthship Part 6 Cool Tube Installation. Basically, the guy's putting a, a geothermal system in. A few points I'd like to make out. Geothermal requires two things to happen. The, the cool from the ground needs to permeate the pipes to bring the cool into the building. In super cold climates, the warmth from the earth needs to be brought into the pipes to warm or to bring warm air or warmer air into the building right that's the basic principle now geothermal comes in this one is an air system right it's it's more a ventilation system there is another sort of geothermal i'm not going to rattle on about right now because i want to make this quick and yeah i suppose i'll answer a few questions but it takes so long to type this stuff up because it is complicated i've sold and installed these systems in australia not this particular system systems that are what i would call inadequate it is very easy, whether you're buying a split, whether you're buying an evap, whether you're putting a, uh, any sort of cooling or heating in, any sort. When they're sized incorrectly, hey, guess what? Shit goes sideways really quickly. Geothermal, I can tell you from experience, you can go to a lot of trouble and you can spend a considerable amount of money. And shit can go sideways if they're not sized correctly and installed correctly, depending on the climate. And that's the key word, the climate. Geothermal, as I said, transfer of heat or transfer of cool from the earth to create... Uh, uh, some systems work on thermal lift, which means in this uh, Jake's video, he's got a nice hill on the side. He will get some thermal lift, but I believe... I haven't watched all these videos, but I believe this one will be fan-forced. I've put fan-forced ones in. Once you get into fan-forced, you have another set of issues that need to be considered. With any sort of air control system, air conditioning you might call it, it relies on air changeover, it relies on the capacity of the system to evacuate the hot or cold, depending on which end of the year you're at, out of the building. Now to do that you need a certain volume of air. Gravity fed or thermal fed, gravity fed, <laughs> gravity with air, that was pretty good eh? Now it's only four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, the thermal fed ones which are not fan forced look they do they will work in a very small area this guy has gone to an extreme length he's using 100 mil pipes and he's got 200 meters and he's got six runs do the math do the math as I say 200 meters by six he's running a lot of pipe 1200 meters of pipe try buying that in Australia do the math you know I know well, I'm a plumber I'm a plumber and I know what a meter of this stuff's worth. You, know, you go buy 1,200 meters of it and tell me what it's all about. This guy is also doing what's called a shallow one. Now I have some some issue with this. This shallow one is actually uh, claimed to be going to work. He only did it shallow, by the way, because of the machine he had. These things should be down six feet in the ground. All right. End of story. In Australia, even deeper. Six feet's not bad though. In countries where they have extremes, where they go to minus 40, minus 20, minus 10 in the, in the night, uh, you don't necessarily have to be as deep. But generally in Australia, because of the extremes in our 40 degree days, this system, and this guy is actually going to put, and I watched the video this morning, and that was by bloody accident, would you believe, he's going to put 50 mil polystyrene over the top of the whole lot to simulate depth. Now, I don't give a fruit who you are, go anywhere and buy a sheet, one sheet of 50 mil polystyrene, multiply it by 200 metres at 8 feet wide, do the math, come back with your 1,200 metres of pipe work, 200 metres of 2 inch thick polystyrene to go to the top, and then, he, and then it gets buried of course, and just see what this sort of system costs as a DIY. This is not a low cost exercise. If you're going to, if you think you can put a low cost one in, you're probably going to undersize it. These systems generally, for a large building, need to be fan forced. 
That means that if you're off grid, you need some power source. You need a solar system that can cope with the fan forced machinery at the end of it to draw the air through. You don't blow air through these things, you draw it through. So the fan goes up at the arse end of the, the system up at the house, and the air comes in from the other end. So if you had a 40 degree day, your hot air goes in the, the far end, way down the end of that trench, and gets drawn up through the system. The heat transfer is occurs because the earth is cool, cools the air down, and by the time it gets to your house, it's, it's all honky-dory apparently. And it is, if the volume is correct. If the volume isn't correct, the cooling will be inefficient and almost negligible. You have to have air transfer that is big enough or large enough to replace or what they call air changeover. These systems work on ventilation, so you will need to ventilate your house well, probably at high level to allow hot air to escape, so that the cool air that comes in, which is under pressure from a fan floor system, more than likely, unless you put a dinky one in that won't work, you need to have ventilation in the house so that the fan floor system can evacuate the air or pressurise the house to a degree similar to an evap and cause air changeover. Now I'm going to leave it at that for the minute. This system, an analysis of, of this system, and I'm going to post up very shortly. He's done a shallow one because of his machine. Bullshit excuse. If you're going to put a geothermal system in, it's got to be deep. You've got to have large volume. He's got the right idea. He's got six 200 metre pipes. That will definitely have volume to it. But that creates the issue that you can't put a 12 volt dinky 5 cubic meters per minute fan on the other end. It's just not going to pull air through this system to, to justify the amount of pipe work in. This system will take a quite a large air handler, they call them. An air handler being the machine that actually sucks the bloody air through the system into the house. Then you will need the ventilation like I said. I'll leave it at that. It's a very brief one. I'm going to put it put it up on YouTube. I know everyone will go, oh, you didn't explain this and you didn't explain that. Well, no, I didn't because this is a very complicated topic. I've sold and installed these systems for years. I know the principle behind them. You can actually use another system, which is um, a fluid, fluid-filled system. They use them primarily in domestic situations. When I say domestic, I mean urban situations. They will put things like refrigerated coolant in a smaller, very small, one-inch bore system that has many coils. You can have them buried in water. You can do all sorts of you know, miraculous things. But those systems require a heat pump at the other end. I'm not going to go into that. Heat pumps are a whole different issue. These geothermal air handlers, I, call, I would like to call it, need to be done correctly. They need to be deep so that you get the transfer. In Australia, with 40 degrees temperature, can't have one this shallow unless you're going to put about a million dollars worth of insulation over it. Dig them deep, do it once, put lots of pipes in to get lots of volume through and put a decent fan at the other end and you will have some success. And on that note, uh, a bit of a bit of a critique on Jake versus Earth, Earthship Part 6. He may make this system work okay in his climate. I don't exactly know where he is. But if he has a 40 degree day beat down on that, I don't care what insulation he puts over it, the earth around will pick up too much temperature to affect the right transfer. You need them down deep so that the 40 degree day does not affect the dirt temperature. So you need them down 6 foot, like I said, is a good depth. You might go 4 foot, but it's a good depth. You put them on the surface in winter and the earth gets that cold, that the, even though it's, uh, it's okay in America, it's minus 20 outside, well, fine. A shallow one might pick up some warmth from the earth. That's a whole different story. In Australia, if you only get zero degree temperature, I would still suggest you put it down, you know, about that four, five, six foot mark, and then you will get some heat transfer into the pipework, and your fan will pull air through that is a lot warmer than the air outside. Anyway, that's cheers from me. That's uh, Stephen Carey from OffTheGridNiles.com on geothermal, the quick version. And I may do one more on this at a later date. But anyway, this will um, do for the moment. It's a very interesting topic. It's a very natural sort of system. Don't be fooled by the cost. People think they can do this stuff for 20 cents. Freaking go and do it. I'm, I'm good for you. I've put very tiny systems in that cost five grand. And they work virtually they virtually have no effect you need to put a system in its size correctly that will cost you money even as a diy and they need to be done properly 
Cheers from me. Cheers from Kerry. Subscribe and like and do all that shit if you want. We'll catch you on the next one. Geothermal in 10 minutes. Catch you guys.